where am I? What am I doing? Well, looking at my attire, you all must be wondering, which city am I in? Well, I'm in the city which never sleeps, a city which is crowded with pubs, a lot of excitement. And for that, you need an urban commuter, a commuter which will take you through these crowded roads. Well, a subcompact SUV will surely do the deeds. For now, I'm going to take you through something which is launched by Maruti Suzuki. Well, it's the new Fronx. Fronx? Oh yeah, you heard it right. It's a name which takes a while to digest. It's an appetizing name. But for now, let me show you around what the Fronx has to offer to you. Well, I'm going to take you through its exterior. Looking at the Fronx reminds you of its elder sibling, which is the Grand Vitara. But it's actually not. It's a delusional feeling that you get looking at the Fronx. I personally love it. Reminds you of the Grand Vitara, which is the elder sibling. Flat and curved bonnet line. And of course, the grille along with the Maruti badging is quite distinctive on your face it's triple cube trademark led lamps down below you have the triple cube fog lamps in a triangular shape now that's interesting since it's breaking the grand vitara monotony looks down below you also have a skid blade moving on the sides if i show you around the alloy wheels also looks like the grand vitara but it's actually not which are 16 inches and of course the black cladding below the car looks much smarter on top you have this really amazing slopey roof line that floats down the rear and makes it look slightly more coupe look and the chrome underlying the glass adds that X factor to its look. It's got 25-20 mm of wheelbase. While well, moving towards the Fronx rear, it really doesn't remind you anything of its sibling. Of course, I really like the coupe like design. You have a spoiler right here, Fronx badging on the left hand side and the smart hybrid badging on the right hand side. I really like the underlining cladding right here. The exhaust is not visible at all. Overall, the look from the rear really sets it apart. I don't know. Uh, I like it. Well, you may like it, you may not. It's up to you to decide. But for now, I'm going to leave you with a thought. Well, moving on to the boot space. Uh, it's about 308 liters of boot space. It gives you uh, an average uh, sort of, uh, you know, space to put your luggage. But a comfortable sight. Uh, you have a halogen bulb to assist you while you are on a very uh, dark side of the road. So you don't really have to be worried about using your torch or anything else. Let's move on inside and see what the tech it has to offer. Now moving to its interior, it surely reminds you of Buleno. But again, do not get confused, it's the Franks we're sitting in. Of course, now we're going to be talking about some of its tech feature, the price point. It is not really a tech savvy car, but then again, you know, it packs a certain features which are worth the money, uh, you know, to start with uh, a couple of features which I really like is the heads up display. Of course, the car comes with a 360 degree camera view. The camera quality uh, is uh, pretty average. I am not really sure whether you're going to like it or not. Again, uh, you know, to add on to some of its, uh, you know, technical features is also is the hard tech platform that it offers. You about six uh, airbags. Uh, front curtain side curtains uh, i don't have to really explain that uh, also the car comes with the eps and the hill hole assist you know which is uh, a pretty much uh, uh, quite a you know handling uh, performance wise uh, an added feature while you're maneuvering the car it gives you a three second uh, hold assist the car while reversing it so that's an add-on uh, moving to its uh, abs also gets involved in the car uh, with the ebd and the brake instant. Well, also while you're on the move, uh, you need an infotainment system that keeps you pep up. Uh, the speaker sound quality uh, is uh, pretty average. Uh, I found it uh, much more appetizing than the other cars uh, in the segment. Uh, I'm not really going to get into the competition of it. Uh, but then again, when I heard it myself, I pretty much liked it. The nine inch screen right here in front of me uh, gives you a pretty much uh, uh, a decent view of uh, how the fuel economy is, the range of the car. Uh, you also have uh, a compartment to charge your mobile phone. Of course, it's the wireless uh, auto Android uh, you know, connectivity. You get one uh, USB port uh, to charge your mobile phone or any other accessory you may want to use. You also get a 12 volt socket here to insert. Maybe if you have anything else uh, to kind of uh, you know, go with the surround sense powered by Akram Suzuki connectivity with 40 plus intelligent features can be accessed through the smartphone, app or Alexa connectivity. Overall, uh, I'm impressed with the seats. Uh, it's quite cushiony here. 
Uh, I sat in the uh, Hyundai uh, venue and I've sat, in fact, in the Sonnet. I was not really comfortable. That's an added uh, advantage. Uh, you don't have any electrically uh, maneuvering seats here. You have uh, all uh, hand uh, hold assist way. So that way, is, uh, there's a lot of cut, cost cut down. But then again, it all boils down to the price point the Franks is going to be launched at. Let's move on to uh, the chauffeur driven side of the car and uh, I'm going to take you through its room and how the entire comfort of the behind of the car is. I'm sitting behind the Franks and uh, quite a uh, airy looking car. Uh, I have a decent uh, view angle to look outside uh, but it, what it compensates with is the headrest that it offers you even in the basic variant. Uh, even in the 1 litre or be the 1.2 litre engine. The wheelbase of the car uh, is uh, pretty decent which is about 25-20 uh, mm uh, so makes it overall a very good experience sitting behind but then again there are a lot of things which are missing. There are no curtains here. Of course it all boils down to the price of the car which you not yet got to know and I'm going to be talking about it a little later. For now I think that's pretty much it. I'm already telling you that the power is slightly uh, under the belt uh, gives you about uh, 100 PS of power which generates about 147 Newton meters of torque but then let's see how it's going to be on the road uh, you know looking at the stance from the inside uh, well the Franks reminds you of the Baleno but it's actually not so do not get confused with those thought uh, from its tech feature we'll take you through it for now hold on to it until I explain you more further deep down how the driving pleasure of this car is and one thing which I really like about sitting at it inside, it gives you a heads up display which just pops out right at the screen in front of you. Uh, it pretty much uh, is something which is an add on, uh, doesn't really uh, give you that kind of a, a belonging uh, in the other, in the same segment, uh, be it the Hyundai Venue or the Kia Sonnet. But well, uh, let's start this journey of driving the Fronx. Franks is meant for city drive considering it's a compact SUV with a 1 litre engine and 5 speed manual. But then it's the booster jet that produces the 100 PS of power and 147 Nm of torque. You also get a 6 speed automatic transmission gearbox as well. We drove the car in the narrow and crowded city of Goa and especially the north side is super crowded. The 4.9 meter of turning radius makes it easy to maneuver around and since the power to weight ratio is well balanced for the city roads. The pickup is quite decent but while changing the gear it takes slightly longer. I'm sure you won't be racing around with the car but then the lag is quite permanent. While moving on to the brakes, the brakes are soft and takes a while to get the car to the standstill. Since we have the disc in the front which is matte Persian strut and the drums at the rear which is tourism bean. This is usually a combination you get in the same segment of car. You also get a comfortable and well cushioned seats that gives an extra touch to the comfortness while driving the car. Well, the brownie of this Franx is the heads up display with the turn by turn navigation. It's quite on your face, which is definitely a brownie while driving the car. Well, I'm in my most scruffiest look. I'm gonna blame the city and not my urban commuter. Maruti Suzuki has placed the Franx in a very different and strategic spot. The Gen Z is gonna be really appealed by the car. I'm really, uh, you know, spectacle about the tech features it offers you at the price point it's going to be launched at compared to Hyundai Venue or be the Kia Sonic or rather the Tata Punch. Well, Punch, it misses us on that. Uh, overall, the brake horsepower and the Newton meters that it has to offer to you, I'm not really that impressed. I drove the 1 litre petrol variant, not yet driven the 1.2 litre turbo jet. Of course, both of them comes equipped with a smart hybrid technology overall. Why am I looking so scruffy? You want to know that? The fronts did really give me a certain obstacles that the Maruti Suzuki had created. Overall, it's very impressive, the ground clearance. It's for you to decide your choosing and your buying capacity, whether you really like it or not. Looking at it from the front, it gives you a grand Vitara look. Looking at it from the interiors, it gives you the Buleno look. I'm not really going to make that judgment. It's for you to decide. 
I'm not really sure if that's the pricing they should be strategically placing the Franks at. Overall experience of the Franks give me a bit of a joy. Well, maneuvering the car, looking at the design, sitting inside, the cushion seat. It's for you to decide if you're really going to buy this car. I'm going to leave you with a thought. But before that, do test drive the other competitors of the Franks or rather the Franks itself. Do not forget to like, share and subscribe. I'm your host Nitish. Until then, you have a good one. We're going to bring you lots and lots of more tech reviews of the car. Till then, you have a good one.